folks, and as I am recording this, I have very recently just done a video on GPS watches and their accuracy and why really close is good enough and you shouldn't be too married to the number you see on your GPS. That's still true, but I thought I'd dig in a little bit more about GPS accuracy. And again, to be fair, I love GPS. I've had a GPS watch since uh, the end of 2006. I think they're a fantastic tool. So a few things to know. So first of all, What's going to help determine the accuracy of your GPS? Now, I'm not talking about uh, you know, how many satellites you connect to, whether or not there's big buildings and stuff like that. But just in general, the GPS chip, there's a lot of different GPS chips that watches, phones, and everything else use. The firmware within the device, and then how that data is being interpreted. So here's a good example of the interpretation. If you're on Strava and you have a Garmin, which is the most popular watch, you might notice that from time to time, say Garmin says you ran nine miles and you put it on Strava and they say, no, we think that you ran 8.85 miles. They will have something different. That's because Strava believes that they have a better way to interpret the data than Garmin does. Most of the time they agree, but from time to time they're different because they're just taking a lot of raw data and trying to make sense out of that. So again, the GPS chip that you have, your firmware and how whatever you're using to interpret that data is going to matter with what the results are giving. So I'm going to show you a study that was done you know, almost every month, every other month from a company or not a company. Uh, it's a website. It is fellrnr.com. I'll try to remember to put this in the comments if you want to look at them. They've got a whole bunch of data. Fellrnr.com is where this comes to. And I want to give a couple caveats with what I'm going to show. It's going to be pretty difficult, I think, to see on the screen as I hold things up. But you can go to that website and you can see more about that. First of all, I don't know what kind of scale they're using. And by scale, I mean you'll see that it's going to show a bunch of different GPS devices and a wide range of accuracy. And it makes it look like who's ever at the bottom is just light years different than who's ever at the top. When the fact is the difference between the top and the bottom could be one meter over the course of a mile. I have no idea what the scale is. And it's also not a sales pitch for a pod, a foot pod. And you'll see why I say it's not a sales pitch for a foot pod when I get to that. So first, let me show you one of the first reports they did was back in November of 15. And this is the graph. I'm not expecting you to be able to see everything in here. But this shows down in the bottom, uh, if I can get this right, this bottom corner is the least accurate. And up by this hand is the most accurate. You can see that the Garmin 620 which is a pretty high-end Garmin watch back in November of 15 had one of the worst accuracy ratings out there. If you could read the fine print, it specifically says this was before version 3.30. The reason that's important is right after this, Garmin released a update or an update to their firmware and the 620 jumped way up to about the top third of what the accuracy is. That happened in 12 of 15. This particular chart is from August of 17, which is the last time this company has done any of this information. So what that means is even when you look at the various watches and how they're rated, it changes depending upon what they're doing with firmware and some of the other things, just like I showed you the 620 changed right away. In this particular one, I found it interesting that down here, down in that bottom corner, you can look at it's got a little arrow. That's the Garmin 235, and I was kind of surprised because that's probably one of the most popular Garmin watches out there, but they rank the lowest. But as I said, I don't know the scale. Maybe that lowest was a half a meter over the course of a mile. I don't know. And since this was August of 17, there's a really good chance that they've updated the firmware and they're a lot more accurate. What else is interesting, if you look up at the top again by this hand, if I could do this right, I've circled a couple things. At the very top is a stride, S-T-R-Y-D, that's a power meter, and that's a foot pod. You can see that they've tested, and I think they continuously test as being more accurate than GPS. And down below is, I can't tell for sure if they had one or two types of foot pods. It says Adidas foot pod, which I've never heard of. Well, and there's a millstone in there as well. Uh, and they all say that those, and they have to be calibrated first, whereas the stride was uncalibrated, are more accurate than any of the GPS watches out there. Again, going back to I don't know what the scale is, just how much more accurate is that, um, but they're more accurate than the GPS watches. So a couple of takeaways for you from all this, besides what I said before, it depends upon the chip. You don't know that. depends upon your firmware. You can do something about that. And data interpretation, you can't much. If you really, really want accurate, foot pods have been shown that they're more accurate than GPS. But then you don't get the nice, cool little maps, which I like. And for me, I like the little map of where I've been running. But I'm telling you, uh, I happen to have a stride foot pad. I, that's what I use if I happen to be indoors or on a treadmill because it's way more accurate that that accelerometer stuff is ever going to be 
that's a personal choice. But if you're just dead set on having the most accurate you can, then a foot pot is really a way to go. But probably the biggest thing you can do is make sure that you're keeping your firmware current because there's a really good chance if you have older firmware, some newer firmware could make your GPS device a little bit more accurate. But in the end, remember, close is always good enough.